Welcome to our program Culture and Christianity. I'm Masi Kiare, and tonight our guest speaker is Mr. John N. N. Nganga. Thank you so much for coming. And tonight we'll talk about witchcraft. Mr. John Nganga, talking of witchcraft, what is witchcraft and how does it relate to superstition? Super, let's start with superstition. Superstitions are uh, unfounded beliefs that cause fear about anything. If you're super, super, you can be superstitious, for example, if you, somebody walks over, that is like a good superstition. If somebody walks over your, over your legs, you are seated, and they walk over your legs, it means you'll never get a child. <laughs> now, <laughs> where is the basis of that? The, the truth is, it's not a biblical requirement, it's not a biblical belief, it is just a belief system, and that is superstition. Unfortunately, some of those fears are things that people who are Christians still live under. Or you can you can walk you can walk uh, you can walk at a given. And I see that even during barriers, you want to put the body facing a certain direction. That is superstition. Because once you understand, like the previous program when we talked about, uh, we, we talk about the dead, once you understand that the dead cannot affect the living, then you understand whichever direction the head faces is totally irrelevant. Mm -hmm. It is superstition to believe that the direction of the, of the head of a dead man will affect the marriage, will affect the, 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 the homestead or the marriage. So we are saying, to be superstitious is to believe things will happen without a proper basis for it. Obviously, gravity is not superstition. <laughs> Just that you understand. In other words, if you jump, it is not superstitious to say you will come down. Why? It can be scientifically shown that when you go up, there is a power of gravity that pulls you down. So the, the, you must understand that what you are talking about is unfounded, mm -hmm. unfounded belief system, and living under the fear. You can you can you can find um, people. There are night people who are called night walkers. They run around your house at night, and you can fear to have sleep at night because you believe if a night runner runs around your house totally naked. <laughs> It could be your uncle. If they run around totally naked, then you start believing that there is going to be trouble in your home. I think it needs to be understood that um, you really, that is superstition. And unfortunately, many people believe in superstition. And it's not just an African problem. The white people, when you hear somebody say, keep your fingers crossed, it's a, it's a superstitious belief about that when, because of saying something, something wrong could happen to it. So you keep your fingers crossed. They also have problem with the number 13. They think that if you put a 13 the floor and you are living there, something wrong will happen. This is, all those are superstitions. Mm -hmm. And in this program of Christianity and culture, mm -hmm. it means whether you are a white man or a Japanese or a Kikuyu or a Nibo, those belief systems that are based not on the scriptures, but on just a fear or a tradition from your ancestors, it needs to be rejected because it is not right. That's what you mean by superstition. But superstition is tied to witchcraft. Witchcraft is not, not just a belief. It is somebody somewhere does something to call on evil powers to do something on his behalf. So the stronger the witch, the better connected he is with the demons. So that what the demons, what the demons, what he asks the demons to do, they will do to you. They can, they, so, so the witch can bewitch you so that you cannot get a child. So now it's not just a question of superstition. There are connotations, there are things that believe. When I was young, I was told they can even pick, pick where you have stepped, they can take your soul, and then that soul, they go and do things with it. And because they are taking your soil and your shadow, it will now affect you. <laughs> so you can see it's not just pure, it's not just simple superstition. It's a belief connected with demonic powers. 
principalities and powers, Ephesians chapter 6 tells us, that is causing us to do that. So when we talk about witchcraft, we are talking about the whole belief system about ability of accessing evil powers in order to affect the way human beings behave and are and whether they will get blessings or curses. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. John Nanga. This is Culture and Christianity, and tonight our topic of discussion is witchcraft. For any comments or suggestion, our SMS number is 706 100, 100 We are also on our social media platforms, that is Facebook, Twitter, Champions TV Kenya. Back to you, Mr. John Nanga. What are the biblical beliefs about witchcraft? I want to, to, read, um, to read quite a number of verses mm -hmm. that talk about... Um, talk about it um, um, first Samuel 28 3 says now Samuel was dead and all Israel had mourned for him and bar buried him in his own town of Ramah so had expelled the mediums and spirits from the land in other words anybody who was involved in witchcraft spirits whatever the, the, the when 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 um, when um, Saul wanted to behave nice, he threw them out. Uh, Leviticus 20:27 20, says, "A man or woman who is a medium or spiritist among you must be put to death. You are to stone them; their blood will be on their heads." In other words, the Old Testament is saying witchcraft was the punishment for witchcraft was actually death. It's of a capital punishment. In other words, God hates witchcraft to the extent he wants anybody who has been identified as a witch to actually be stoned dead. Leviticus 20 verse 6. I will set my face against anyone who turns to medium and spiritists to prostitute themselves by following them and I will cut them off from their people. These people who can, the spirits and the witch, witches who can reach the evil spirit. God is saying, I will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums. Now, the medium, the witches are supposed to be killed. Now he's not dealing with them. He's talking about the people who visit them. That means, anybody who, you are not a witch yourself, but you visit witches. You yourself, the Bible is saying, I will, God will set his face against people who visit witches and medium and spirits. And it's in, you can see, I'm reading all these verses, so you can see the Bible does not leave us uh, doubting what needs to be done. Then um, 1 Samuel 28 verse 7, So then said to his attendants, Find me a woman who is a medium, so I may go and inquire of her. There is one in her that they said. Now, this same soul who had killed all of them, still hopes he can find one. The following day he died. After he visited this, this witch, he actually died. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19. When someone tells you to consult mediums and spiritists who whisper and mutter, should not the people inquire of their God? Why consult the dead on behalf of the living? Mm -hmm. Now, what the word of God is saying, God is totally unhappy with the idea of witchcraft and spiritists and mediums going to powers. Because then the alternative is clear. Why can't you pray? Sometimes the thing that drives us to them is the fact that you have a sick child, they have gone right up to the best consultants, and they are still sick. Someone say, no, 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 no. There's somebody here who knows how to deal with the matter. Now, it means... If you are trying to say God has not healed the baby, and because you are so desperate to keep the baby, you would think it's the better to use the powers of the demons to oppose God. Then which side are you? Don't you feel you need to get to where you say, I am praying this, yet not my will be done, but yours. The Son of God, is that what he said in the Garden of Gethsemane? He knew he did not want to die. He feared the pain as a human being. So God, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours. So to me, the kind of things that send out witches are things 
that you not be doing so. Because even where the worst things have happened to you, you are ready to go God's way. If the worst that can happen is for you to die, if it is for your son to die, is for your business to be bankrupt, you are ready. Not my will, but yours. So Leviticus 19, that one. Do not turn to medium or seek out spirits, for you will be de de you will be defiled by them. I'm the Lord your God. You cannot relate with them and continue in righteousness. The last verse I want to read is Revelation 21, verse 8. And he's saying, but the cowardly, number one. Number two, the unbelieving. Number three, the vile. Number four, the murderers. Five, the sexually immoral. Those who practice magic acts, the idolaters and all liars, they will be consigned to the fairy lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So people do those witchcraft activities, magic art, what not. They are in the same category with the vile, with the murderers. They are all going to hell, mm -hmm. which is, he has called it the fairy lake of burning sulfur, which is the second death. So I wanted to read all this so that you understand. We have defined witchcraft and superstition. Yes. We are saying, if you are the one who is a witch, you are not supposed to be alive. The other person says should be dead. If you are visit and believe in those witches, the Bible is saying God is against you, and God will keep Himself as an He has taken you as an enemy. What's the alternative? Instead of trusting those things, learn to pray to God, learn to trust in God. Thank you so much, Mr. John Ganga. Tonight we are discussing about witchcraft. And for your any comments or suggestions, our SMS number is 706 100 100. We are also on our social media platforms, that is Facebook, IG, and Twitter as Champions TV Kenya. We'll take a quick commercial break and be right back after the break. Stay tuned. <laughs> 